Now, folks, we're in for a bit of a treat this week because the only time that Jacko lets me be question master is when he's got some. I'm the guest. Wants. You're the guest. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be the question master today. Now, those that have been long term listeners of the long time listeners of the podcast will know the question master story. If you don't know, get to know by going back to the beginning. But it was an illustrious job that, that Jacko doesn't like to share. But um, <laughs> I am taking on the mantle today. So it was oh, oh, a very short. Oh, it was basically I didn't have the knowledge to be able to answer the questions, so it was automatically I had to be question master so that you could you could uh, you could uh, you'll be the one answering the questions. Well, today, Jackie, you have got the knowledge because I have never done a nasally nasal breathing marathon, and you have. So that means I am going to ask you some questions about it. So Maybe experience before, rather than knowledge, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So <laughs> that is a plan for today's podcast. Um, Jacko, have we got anything else we need to tell our wonderful audience about before we start talking about you running 26.2 miles and a bit more, actually? Well, I was really going to say, we'll, we'll get into that. I've got a bone to pick with the organisers. Mm. But um, what the only, th- the only thing I wanted to say to listeners was that... Um, if they want to improve the way they move and enjoy their training a little bit more, and they haven't tried our, uh, all the programs inside the virtual classroom with our online memberships, then check out a seven-day free trial. Um, you get to test out everything. It's, you can cancel any time, and it's only nine ninety nine a month. Uh, nine nine ninety nine a month after that, anyway. But you get seven days to t- check it out to see whether it's the type of thing that's good for you. If you like a little bit of a uh, little bit of fun with your training, if you like looking after your body, if you like to challenge yourself with things like handstands, muscle ups. But equally, if you want to improve your lower body training and how your uh, how your lower body can uh, can help you with the you know outside of um, your sort of calisthenics stuff like I've done with the with the running, or it might be you're doing OCRs or whatever that might be, then uh, you will benefit from the the all the training that is involved in those programs. Marvellous. Right, without further ado, let's keep it short. Um, we're going to get into the main chat. Um, hold your breath. Here comes Jacko talking about running. <laughs> hold your breath. An After an exo. After, yeah, okay, we'll get into that. Enjoy. Here we go. Roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Question number... No, I'm not going to say <laughs> <laughs> let's, give, like let's, let's give the people a little bit of context, Jacko. So right. before we get into um, the, the main bulk of the experience itself, yes. let's talk a bit about... I know that I know that you have um, wanted to do a marathon before for quite some time. It was mm. on your list of goals. Yes. Um, talk about why you wanted to do a marathon before yeah. we start getting into the depths of why you then decided to do it without using um, your mouth. I would just like to start the podcast by saying that um, the quality of your work as question master, despite the lack of experience of that, because... <laughs> Potentially, you would actually that's like great questions, and the only time you have been questioned is always, always, which then makes it a little bit challenging. Because I'm like, oh, you should be question master, but then as well as answering the questions, but then that leaves me without a job. But anyway, um, I um, <laughs> it's kind of you to say, Jack, <laughs> for a compliment. That makes me feel nice. You to say, I, Jack, um, for a compliment. I, mean, I don't know. I sort of it was just one of those things that where it was like I've always loved nice. sport as a kid and growing up, and just seeing a marathon. It wasn't, and I don't mean this in the way some people will be like, no, that's like I don't want to run a marathon at all, and. I like training, but it was one of those things for me, just that for some reason, and I really don't know why, but for some reason it was like just something I thought I, it was almost like I, I should do or should be able to do, or just like it's one of those like bucket list things of like, if you're really into training, like I just got up, I was like, I, I, want, I want to, I want to say, I want to be able to say that I've done one. I want to have experienced one. I don't want to, to die and have, have never actually like seeing like can you actually run a marathon or not? like there's loads of people that do it like can can you think you you think you you like training point, like running you, like can you do one you but, took the right approach um, to training for a marathon from somebody who's from from, from like me like a speed based um, interval uh, condition or into effort type sport like rugby the one thing about running a marathon which puts me off is the training now it's probably fair to say that your tra- approach to training was minimalistic in that you hadn't actually run that far in terms of complete distance before my, going into the event, which I think is the right way to do it. <laughs> my one, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as to why it was um, <laughs> a, a, as unscientific as it was scientific. Um, 
people have asked like, oh, so what, yeah, what, yeah, what program did you follow? It's like, program? I went out running, son. <laughs> um, but, uh, so what, so you wanted, you wanted yeah, to no, I can't, uh, well, that's not a very good question, Master Skills. I felt like I was, yeah, and then, and then, but yeah, but, um, other sports got in the way, like rugby and whatnot, and then I, I, I enjoyed playing and, and was very lucky to play, like, professionally, but it did mean that, like, you couldn't do certain things in your, in your contract, like, you couldn't go skiing or snowboarding or whatever, and, going and hammering yourself in the off season to run a marathon wouldn't be, and you just wouldn't have the time to do the training. Anyway, that was my excuse as to why I'd not done one. And then it was at Christmas last year. I was like, or the Christmas just been for some reason, it just came back into my head about like, uh, cause I'd got, I was doing more running, wasn't I? And then um, it was like, Oh yeah. I remember you wanted to do a marathon, but you couldn't cause you were playing rugby. This was a conversation in my own head. Um, just as you do in the, just being weird in an evening. And I was like, yeah, but you, that excuse ended like, in 2013, like what, what's your excuse now? So I literally that night just logged, um, actually mess. There was someone, um, messaged me. He used to work for the, I think he worked for the company that I did it with. Um, where I wanted, I didn't want to do a road one or anything. I wanted to go off road, wanted it to be trail. I love being by the coast. So I was like, um, yeah, got recommended this one in Suffolk that endurance life do is the flattest one because a lot of them around the coast are obviously like not very flat. It was the flattest one. It wasn't that flat, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm running on the sand. We probably went onto the actual beach maybe about five times like, on actual sand. And that was, um, that, that slowed things down somewhat. Um, but in a weird way, it was just like, a like, even though it was like not nice, it was just like, you completely changed your like gates to just wade your way through the, the sand, which on about mile, 22 was actually quite a pleasant surprise um and there were some old people who were just going down for their uh, like morning dog walk or whatever that kept passionate they're like are you all right I'm like, I'm fine it just feels really nice to run like this i was like i'd like sprayed my legs out and was like sort of like completely like just using the, uh, it, was, it was weird and um but uh yeah and they were like how long? it was like at that point i think we've been going four hours it was like yeah um but yeah, it was, uh, um, so yeah, I just literally signed so up that it's, night and it was like, if I sign up to it, then I got to do it. Journey, um, just, uh, and then, then, then it started. Then long so. listeners will have, will have heard the detail around this, but just for people that maybe have jumped on this and have seen it or listening to us for the first time, you, when you finished your playing career, um, your rugby playing career with a head injury, you couldn't run at all. So to, to come from that to where you are now is, is yeah. to have done a full marathon is, is amazing and people should... I hopefully find encouragement in that, that there is from you being in a very bleak situation with not being able to have that kind of that physical ability taken away from you. Yeah. You've actually now completely, well, I say completely, there's, I think there's a bit of lasting damage, but you've relatively well, like rehabilitated yourself, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. So I, context was, um, yeah, head injury, a seizure in, on the training field and, and a bleed on the brain. And that took me, I, di- I tried to get back to playing rugby initially, but like any time I did any sort of exercise or anything, I just couldn't uh, deal with the, the symptoms of like headaches, issues with my eyes and vision and all that sort of stuff. And um, it was a year, it was pretty much a year, like very close to one of those, like, it was like a, a sort of like a year to the day. It was, it was almost that much. It was definitely, it was a year within the month because um, it was August 2014 um was doing some had some time off and traveled in um was in new zealand and we were trying to get to i think it was franz joseph there was a um one of the uh what's franz joseph called it's like a like like a big iceberg. icicle but it's not think of like a mountain that's full of ice why can't I think of the word? A glacier. Uh, an yeah, iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an iceberg. A glacier. A glacier. And it was like um we parked the campfire up and it was like, we had to get to, we had to get to the thing, see it. And the sun was coming down. It was like, we didn't really have much time. And then it was like, we was like, well, and then it was like, Catherine started running and I was like, Oh, I, like, had to, I, did, I didn't like think about it. And I was like running. Then we got like, maybe ran for like five minutes, got there. And she was like, Whoa, this is amazing. And I was like, yeah, I haven't got a headache. <laughs> and then it was like, so that was, it sort of came up by a uh, surprise, which was good. Um, there was then, a year later, 2015, I ran my first 10K, but got far too um, uh, uh, competitive and I like, absolutely thrashed myself towards the end and ran like a relatively good time. Like, I think I did about 47 minutes, which surprised me. I didn't think I would do it that fast. 
uh, and then I had headaches for about three days after that. So there was it was, it was like oh, just a little bit of a, a warning sign to me. So I sort of like backed off. But then just more recently getting into the sort of um, coming across the oxygen advantage and the importance of nasal breathing and realizing myself like, oh, when I go out running, I can't breathe through my nose. It's like an absolute horror show. Um, why is that bad? And then and then linking some of that back to head injuries and concussions messing up with your, your respiratory system and how you breathe and, and then using that as a tool to carry on that sort of like long term like rehabilitation of the brain helps it like some of the breath holding helps improve oxygen supply to the brain. But Dr. Cobb from Z Health that we had on the podcast talked about um, if that's not done, if that's not gone untreated, oxygen supply to your brain for years afterwards, a head injury and concussion can can stay affected. So I was I was interested in that. that like, so just on like the, the do you think challenge that, of it in a way. You know, someone said like, "Oh, you've had a head injury and you're going out for a run and you're getting a headache." In my mind, yeah. before to knowing what we do know about breathing now, you've sort of be thinking, "Well, is it like the impact of the brain and is it still some inflammation and swelling, um, like that's kind of like yeah. causing it, or or some issues around the neck and stability or, or whatever it might be?" Do you think it is a combination of the brain injury having healed yeah. over that period of time, or is it? more to do with how you're breathing and or, or the interplay between the two have you, have you kind of like got any insight on what you think might have been like the root cause of why you were getting a headache um interest uh there's pro- i think a little bit of all those things so there's if you look at um again d- just dr cobbs is a bit of an expert in this on like he's got this whole course on on concussion that i've done um and that like neck and spine instability they see it. They call it like a bobblehead or bobblehead. That after after someone's had a um, a concussion, that ability to like stabilize your midline is reduced. Um, he could tell you why, I don't know, whatever that mechanism is, but that is that's affected. And then therefore, when you are running, your head's bobbing around more because it's less stable. And then you've almost anything that was like making the head like rattle effectively then you've got the brain moving in that like would definitely disturb it. That was like would be far worse for me than rather than like cycling on a, on a, on a bike uh, in a gym was like the first thing that I was able yeah. to do because there was no real movement, but just a little bit of, um, yeah. And one of the things that they do is they suggest you like you, you take yourself up to where you start to get those, those symptoms and then work at 80% of like say, see what heart rate that happens at and then work at 80% of that heart rate. Cause actually aerobic exercise getting the system working, getting, um, training the respiratory system back, trying to improve the, that breathing is is one of the best things to help re- rehabilitate the brain. And then learning about how important it is to nasal breathe compared to mouth breathing, and then actually realizing that if you find it difficult to breathe through your nose, that means you need to work on it. Like if you breathe through your nose when you're running and it's dead easy, it's probably because you've been doing it like that for a very long time. You haven't got... Uh, the sort of same dysfunctional breathing patterns that are developed um, to me that is to, uh, it happened to me and that happened and that's you know there's that I'd seen one research paper that said like it was literally ninety it was like ninety nine percent chance that you're going to have like disrupted your, your breathing um, from do you um, think a concussion. That... Uh, I guess for you that to actually degree. learning to run just this is probably an aside for people that um, maybe haven't had who aren't interested in head injuries and, and nasal breathing just to flip that slightly to across one side to go for you to learn to run at eighty yeah. percent is probably quite I imagine that was quite difficult for you because you're from our training together you're kind of like all in smash it competitive push the red line um, I imagine that you've had to do yeah. quite a lot of disciplined work on not going to go and sit at that threshold kind of place where I'm literally going to go and hang on for as long as I can and, and, and actually run within yourself. Yeah. But that also makes me reflect back on the conversation we had with Martin Yelling around sort of that's actually the better way to, to, to do these kind of distance running is, is you've got to kind of manage your yeah. ego a little bit. Yeah. But if you're going to go and run for like a long time, like you just, you've got to be in a comfortable a comfortable place and like the um one of the th- the the starting point for me was like right i understand all of the reasons why nasal breathing now is like good for good for your exercise performance but as well as good for your overall health like it's something you need to do try and try make when you go running like 
trying to nasal breathe is obviously more challenging than when you just sat at rest because you know you need to get more oxygen in and there's more carbon dioxide that's being built up that you've got to deal with it and, and get rid of and the nose being smaller than the mouth makes that just more challenging of it coming in and out but it's not to say that it shouldn't that that more that challenge is something that we therefore shouldn't embrace it actually helps with oxygenating the body because slower breathing is helpful for for that and the fact that I and it was like this is actually one time probably that my ego has actually helped me because I tried to run to the I tried to go out and run like right, right I'm going to nasal breathe I got to the end of the road and my mouth my nose was just pouring with snot it was so blocked I couldn't do it and I was like I can't do that and my ego, that is normally the worst thing in the world, but my ego is actually, yeah, but you as a professional rugby player, Jocko, like you should be able to do this. And I was like, yeah, I should be able to do this. And then, but what it, what that then did was make me go, right, I need to sort this out. So, and if you, if you like commit to sorting that out, um, some of the breath holding work uh, really helps to clear the nose. And you can do that as part of like the, the walking and jogging and moving stuff. But as, as just a, making a commitment to go, I'm going to sort this out. So when I go running, yeah. you have to run slower to allow your nose to, to deal with it. And I talk to people now going like, let your nose dictate the pace of your running. And in time, you'll get back up and then you will feel the positive benefits. Then you'll feel the improvement in the efficiency. Um, but at the start, because it's blocked, you're going to have to go really slow or it's going to be really hard. That doesn't mean nasal breathing is worse than mouth breathing. What it means is your nose has maladapted the fact that you've been mouth breathing all the time. Um, so slow it down. That, so that was the start of it. And then when I got into it, when it was like, right, I'm going to do this do this marathon, there's um, uh, Ben at Vivo, one of the, uh, the uh, running coach at Vivo. I went to see him and he was like, hey, dude, yeah, you're you're trying to run a marathon with like the running action of, a, of sprinting. He was like, that ain't going to work. <laughs> um, and one of the things there was around like, efficiency so i was like down with the efficiency of my breath from the, the efficiency of, of of nasal slower breathing and combining that then with um like running economy efficiency of just like um they're on like 108 one that one of his big things is 180 beats or like steps so it's like three steps every second do, 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 do. and he'd set a metronome you'd have to like you see it like your steps are tiny and you're just like sort of bouncing along and trying to like keep everything behind you so it's like your feet are landing directly below you just like small little like pick up of the of the foot from behind you and you just you feel like you're just flicking your feet behind you you're just like do 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 and uh and then you're like mm. you, you just don't really feel like you're doing anything you're like yeah i could probably i feel like i could do this for four hours even though i've only done it for a few minutes now but um yeah, that was um, that was interesting. Some conversations with Tony Riddle, who's done like ran from Lands End to John O'Groats, um, nasal breathing and barefoot, like forty odd marathons, whatever it is. Like um, just combining those two things and working at uh, one of the things to keep you in that like that, that goes really nicely with the nasal breathing is staying in the, your aerobic zone of um, and tracking your heartbeat of one eighty minus your age. So I finally got a Garmin because I needed something to, I'd only use it when I'm running, but to tell me my heart rate and my pace. So keeping it 180 minus your age. So for me, it was like trying to keep under 140. And actually the start, Ben at Vivo was like, keep it under, like, like go even easier, like 130. It's like running at 130 is like super, it's, it was nice. And like the nasal breathing was like, oh, I can actually like, I can actually practice breathing light, like breathing really gently, One, try and breathe almost quietly when at that. Recovery and yeah, your pace, like Oh, you, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's super nice. And then you're like, it's actually enjoyable. So you don't go as far because you're going slower. And you're, you know, my, uh, say my pace then might have been seven minute kilometers. And then a few, and then, and you're like, um, anytime your heartbeat started to go up to that, that, that point of 180 minus eight, so 140 for me, if my heart rate got to 145, 150, mm -hmm. I'd be like, my nose would start to be then that, I'm starting to suck in a bit fast, it's closing in itself, and then I'd check and I'd be like, oh yeah, my heart rate has got right, I'd bring it back down. But what happened was, as you start to then train that efficiency, you get more efficient at utilizing oxygen within the body, you get better at buffering um, any of the, the lactate that's getting built up from the, um, from the CO2, but ultimately you're never getting to that stage of like getting outside of that aerobic zone and just getting better at that. And what happened was you'd be running along a few weeks later, um, your, your nasal breathing and you're like, 
Oh, it feels like, yeah, it feels super, it's feeling super nice. Check the heart rate. Heart rate's now at like 135 rather than 140. And you're like, oh, but my breathing still feels really nice, even though it's a bit higher. And what, oh, and then I'm at six and a half minute Ks. And it was like, and then this just kept going on. So it was, um, you know, you, you, you're running along, you check your speed. Oh, I'm doing six minute Ks now. My, na- my nasal breathing feels absolutely fine. Mm. Look, at my, look at my heart rate. It's like, oh, I'm doing 138. Like, oh, and that fit like my heart rate's barely gone up and yet I'm running. So my pace started to improve. Breathing stayed really nice and easy. Um, so we're just training that breathing, breathing efficiency. And I did all of my um, all of my training for my marathon like that. And, and, and my, you know, someone had asked me like, oh, what? Yeah. What program did you follow or how long? Blah, blah, blah. This I didn't have anything structured other than that. Other than going, right, this is happening in October. It's Christmas. I got to start. I got to start where at the moment I'm like a 5K, occasional 10K running type of guy. I need to build up. So I literally just was like doing some 5K. And then it was like, right, I did a few 7Ks, some some eights and nines. Then it was like, okay, 10 is okay. Like I'm just getting like, getting to like 12 or 15K. And then um, I did have some like calf and, uh, issues for a bit that like held me back a little bit. Because um, I just, uh, I was just pushing things a little bit too much of my, my technique, this is, I I'd mentioned this to you before, like, but just in some conversations, that's all since gone away since I've like got that better, that, that better running mechanics. Um, I don't have any issues and uh, like I could run in, in, in complete barefoot shoes now and it not, not cause any problems. Um, but yeah, getting to, I only, the plan was to like, just keep progressively building up. And I was probably doing like, it was like one long run a week and like try and get another shorter one in like, I doubt that I ever really ever ran. I might have ran three times in a week, a couple of times. Like most time, it's like just once or twice. Got up to um, a half marathon, and I think we did three half marathons, um, but never really got much more than that. I think I did twenty two k once, which is like a kilometer more than a half marathon. Um, and I used to one of the I've, I've written a blog about about some of the lessons and one of them was like this this breathing efficiency so, so all of it was done at that, um, but one of the other things I did which was not planned was um, I mean it's me and Mrs Jacko would just go out for these runs we'd never take a drink of water with us and we'd never take any food with us so uh, one of the uh, tips people were giving me like the week before the marathon it was like oh like just trying to get some advice from some people and um, Brian Keane says like you know. Don't eat if you've never had jellies and things when you're out on your training. Don't pick them up when you're going around. Did it? Just have what you were doing in your training. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't do anything in my training. Um, <laughs> so what, during the marathon, and and then and the other thing he said was, um, eat. Uh, a couple of people said this to me: eat early. If they give you, if there's, if you've got the opportunity to have something after five k or ten k, like have it. Don't think, even if you don't feel like it, just have it. So I was like, I had a uh, like banana and a bit of like a um, a paleo bar thing um and uh it felt like i was cheating and, and a drink i put some electrolytes in a, in a drink that i got and it was like having a drink every like half an hour ever and having a little bit of something to eat i was like got to got to that point of um the half marathon i remember being at 24 <laughs> there was there was a sign missing we're like running through this like forest and then everyone went the wrong way because there was a, a, one of the signs missing. Luckily, I'd had a piss. So I was like 30 seconds behind everyone else. And everyone starts running back the other way. And I'm like, where are we all going? <laughs> it's like, we've gone the wrong way. And then there's one lady had a phone and she had OS maps on her phone. I was like, I said, I said, I said this to her. I was like, <laughs> I don't know you, but I trust you. Because she looked like she knew what she was doing. Yeah, I can see on my, on my OS map, it's down here. So we, we got off. And so I'm chatting to her. Have you done many marathons before? She's like, yeah, yeah, I've done a few. And she looked super comfortable. We're at 24K at this time. So over halfway through. And I said, well, this is exciting for me because um, I've never done one before. And I've never even ran this far before. <laughs> and she was like, what? You've never, you haven't done more than a half in your training. <laughs> uh, she was like, be careful. Like, just go real steady now. Um, but... And, you know, and I was waiting for the wall to come and not that it wasn't hard, like it was flipping hard, but I never got to the point where my body, I, I can't, I can't, I, de- I can't describe to you what the wall is like because I don't feel like I, I hit it because if I did hit it, I don't know what everyone's talking about because it didn't, uh, do you know what I, mean? I, I didn't need, there was no sort of like 
debilitating like I have to stop I just kept kept on with the with my breathing anytime things started getting really nasty just go to what I know of like larger breaths and slower breaths through in and out through the nose is more is more efficient so anytime you're feeling like uh, uh, you want to get to that like oh this is just horrible it was like breathe big and like do uh, that's 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 just stuff focused on and that like felt good um I was pretty nasty as soon as we finished because right so anything a marathon's 26.2 miles my Garmin clocked 27.06 the week before, I was like checking the route. I was like, "Hold on, this is twenty-seven miles." Like, and technically, so I'm told, ultra, anything over twenty, yeah, yeah, anything yeah. over a marathon, like anything an over twenty-six point two is an ultra. So, but there was an ultra. The the guys that were doing the ultra, the guys that were doing the ultra, had to do another ten k once we'd finished. And it was like, oh man, I was running with a guy that was doing it, and as I, I like finish, I <laughs> see you I see in an hour, like you got to go and do another 10k. I was like, that is brutal. Um, but yeah, I was pretty nasty when I crossed the finish line. Pretty na- that was Saturday. Pretty nasty yeah, like, like Sunday morning. Or tired? Why Sunday night? Uh, yeah, legs. sore, sore, just just sore um, legs. Yeah, and um, but Sunday night started feeling like good. Monday, I actually did a little bit of a training session. Felt all right. The, the the one of the one of the weirdest things right and this is what i quite liked and i noticed this on any of the longer runs i did whenever i was getting over about 18k things in your body that you didn't know were an issue would like come and start talking to you so you know um i had a i've had an issue with my right knee like when I played rugby, I like tweaked MCL a little bit. And then when we did some stupid audible. yoga challenge thing, I literally, popped. something popped. popped. You're something. laughing because you remember. Possibly. Something popped on my knee. Yeah. In like a, a <laughs> lot of external rotation. And um, yeah, so that's, that's generally like, I can feel that in when I do lots of different things. Um, and my, uh, saying about my calves, it would be like my, and it would be like my right calf. And then I'd go out on these runs get to 18k right knee is absolutely mm. fine right calf's fine and my left calf is like going oh not like this on my left hamstring i never have a problem with my left hamstring ever 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 because my right one always pulling it feels tighter than left hamstring's like oh crikey we're a bit tight i'm like what is going on and i it, it, the, the thing in the marathon my i was actually a little bit nervous on the friday night and it was probably to do with literally to do with the nerves it was like my right knee started like aching a little bit like almost like in anticipation. Anyway, it was absolutely golden. No issues at all on that at all during the marathon. My left knee adductor, like at one point was it, it, it nearly, and this is where I was like, that would, would, would have been, the, you know, if something like cramped up, it was like my left side, like went, it just a couple of times, looks like it went, oh, oh. so I, I just did the breathing and it, and it went away and I was like, good. Um, but my, yeah, my left knee, well, my IT band, like, so your classic runner's knee, which I've never, ever, 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 ever get on my left side, like, IT band, tight, pulling on kneecap, and my T, like, when we finished, like, I couldn't, I didn't want to stand up, because I was, like, tired, so I was trying to sit down, and my TFL on my left side was just cramping, and I was like, ah, like, so I couldn't sit, like, I couldn't, I didn't want to stand up, I couldn't sit down, and that was... But I never, ever, ever, I could do anything to my left leg and it done, it's not bothered. Whereas during that, it didn't, and, and then what that's made me realise is I'm doing, so something like, um, something like, like a, cos, a deep Cossack squat, go over onto my left side, fine. Go over onto my right and it's like, oh, my right ankle feels a bit tighter and that right knee, da, da, da. What I've come to realise of some of my issues on that right side is literally because actually that hamstring adductor on my an adduct on my on my left is actually tight but it was just going under the radar just didn't wasn't ever noticing and it was all my sort of like attention and focus and everything was actually on the what was going on with the with the right so since then i've been doing some stuff on that left which i'd normally just leave alone um and it's and it's and it's massively helping uh, it was just weird that i needed to run about 20 miles before it would start to talk to me so but i found that like really interesting kind of summarize and think you just some, some takeaway points for people for those that are running a marathon or want to change the way that they mm. they they go about their training for a marathon 
there's a couple of just um, interesting things that I think you've you've said, and one thing which I think y you haven't mentioned, which is probably useful for people to know, is that you didn't have a time in mind, which I think would then directly enabled you to train no. probably more intelligently and more in a way where you are actually listening to your body and what your body was capable of, rather than going, I've got to do this in three and a half hours or four hours yeah. or whatever it might be, because then you're chasing something which may yeah. well be outside of your physiology or at the at the limit of your physiological capabilities whereas your your focus is very much on an internal yeah. sense of one completion but also like how my body is going to be able to deliver this this call it a performance um or to complete yeah. the event um so training yeah. relatively modest i think in terms of but having the, no. a different it's really what many people want to do you just want to complete it right you just want to do it yeah i I had to, yeah, there was two goals. Was like I didn't want to walk, so I wanted to run all the way through. Um, I didn't want to have to walk, and I wanted to enjoy it because <laughs> I'd enjoyed the training, and I wanted to. I didn't want to finish and be like, oh, that was flipping horrible. I never want to do that again because I would like to do some more. I'm doing a half in two weeks actually. Um, uh, and you're right. My I took a time out of it because what I wanted to practice and wanted to get better at was I wanted to improve. I wanted to, it was like, I wanted to do it, but I wanted to like carry on improving this breathing and my breathing efficiency to just to help my body. And all of my training was focused on just being more efficient with your breathing, which then makes your running economy and all that like more efficient as well. So it's all about efficiency, not about time, not about pace. Cause if you're trying to hit, what happens if you want to hit a time to go, I'd love to break four hours. Of course I would. I did four hours, mm. 53, but we were running on the beach and it was, there was some elevation. It was off road. Like it was not, it was never going to be fast for anyone. I think the winning time was like three hours and 20 or something like, so even the guy that was flipping flying around was like, it's slow in terms of marathon time. But if you set, if you set yourself a time, then that time equates to a pace. And then you're trying to hit a pace and like, yeah, I could have done my training at a faster pace for like running the 10K, the 50, whatever. I could do it at a faster pace, but my breathing then wouldn't have been as good. And then I wouldn't have actually been working on my efficiency of how I'm actually getting oxygen in. And therefore that's not going to help me when I'm actually out there, out there running. And and I think I'd, it wasn't, it wasn't planned in terms of like, I, I should have ran more than a half in training, but it does, it, I, it, it proved a nice point that if you focus on how efficiently you can get oxygen into the body and how your body deals with like this, the CO2 that's getting produced from that aerobic exercise, you don't get to that point where you can't keep going because you're not ever getting into that debt. Um, and well done. yeah, proof that's a great experiment. Like you've, you've done something which I think um, in terms of not necessarily the, the completion of the marathon, which for you is a big achievement, but and something you wanted to do, but you've done it in a way which I think really respects your philosophy around training um, and what I've seen in a evolution in you and then mm. how you approach that of actually learning to listen to your body. Like you were terrible at that when we first started, like you would be the person who would train yeah. until you broke yeah. and then get pissed Horrendous. off about it. Whereas for you to, no to have gone and done this <laughs> and basically sit inside your potential like physiological limits, but then actually to have achieved something which is would have been much greater from a learning and reflection experience perspective than it would have been to just gone and redlined it like the whole time, I think is is a really cool. Yeah. Um, like you say it's a scientifically unscientific. There is some some really solid rationale to back up why you've done what you've done. <laughs> you haven't gone out and done uh, yeah. marathon training that people would have done but maybe you didn't need to because people didn't you didn't need to hit a pace so you didn't need to go and see what it was like to run 20 miles at a yeah. six minute mile pace or whatever it might be because that wasn't the, the goal and i just think that's a really yeah, anybody yeah. who's like thinking about doing something yeah. which is a little bit probably like scary or you kind of don't, i don't know if i can do it change the context and the and the kind of the the um the story around why you're doing it and, and what it's about and and like you've interestingly it's sort of like you could have just gone oh, yeah. i'm gonna go run a marathon and you could have gone and done it quite slow and, and whatever else but you've you've taken the opportunity to use that as a vehicle to learn something else um which wasn't about how fast can i do this thing yeah. which i think is really cool i think that's quite refreshing yeah no thanks mate I think the the other thing just for people or just uh, some like a another reason or side benefit like whether someone's wanting to do a marathon or not or they just want to do a 5k or the, whatever it is that they want to do 
having some element of your training at that low aerobic pace, 180 minus your age, nasal breathing, really nice and slow, that will benefit like all of your training. Like even if you like, like doing high intensity CrossFit workouts, having some of your training done in that state is going to train your breathing efficiency. And if you think that my breathing efficiency is better, so effectively when I'm exercising, I'm breathing less breaths per minute. My heart is beating less times per minute. Just the overall like work rate of the system in the background is just like drop down. So I'm starting at a lower pace before I go on and then do anything else. And like, how does that feel? How does that make you feel for, if I train for one hour a day, I've got 23 other hours in the day. Well, you improve your breathing when like you improve your breathing efficiency. It's not just related to them when you're training. My breathing rates now when I'm just sat here doing this are like way lower than they were before. Like my whole, the whole, so my, you know, th- like your, your breathing is calmer, is less. The whole system is calmer and less. The, but there's benefits for you. Use your training, but you're going to, to get benefits for training, but you're also going to get those benefits through all the rest of, of, of your life in terms of just how you generally feel in terms of managing uh, managing stress, being calmer, because the system itself is more efficient. So my last question, and therefore it can and be calmer. an interim temporary role as question master. Um, no, that wasn't it. I know that answer. How much uh, ice cream did I eat YouTube, afterwards? Sorry, I'm kind of dodging the sunlight. That's, that's, yeah, I'm kind I of liking it. I want to be over here, but I look like Casper. So I would go here. <laughs> like, if I, if I go in the middle, people have to watch this YouTube. I'm like half face <laughs> from Batman. I've got to do both. Um, so yeah, the last question check, is, I know you. you are, that your personality will be constantly now looking, not constantly, you you're, you're, given your personality, you will now probably, I imagine, be looking towards the next thing. And I'm interested to know within the distance running endeavor, is there a next thing? Is there more marathons or is there more ultras? Or is it, if you kind of tickled that itch and you've gone, you know what, it's good. Every now and again, I might do it. I've ticked off a marathon. It's on my, it's on my list of things that I've done. I'm now going to go and just do something else or keep doing with what I was doing before. Um, so I... In two weeks, uh, Catherine, my, Mr. Jacko's sister's boyfriend, is doing a half uh, through some woodland London, in it? London somewhere. And he was like, he's doing a half. And actually, he's trying to do it quite fast. He's trying to do like a mm-hmm. one hour 45, like half. I was like, that's that's quite quick. Um, but anyways, I was like, I've done all this training. I don't want to just like completely switch off and then have to. And then when I would come back yeah. to wanting to do, do a bit more running, like I have to like build right back up. So I signed up for that half which is in two weeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing that. Um, I haven't signed up for anything else yet. I haven't actually even scoured the internet to see what else it is that I want to do. I would one what I would like to do, um, is I would like to see if I can back it up as in do something on the Saturday and then can you back it up on Sunday? Um, so a two day event or something that involves, and it might be, there's something about, you know, sign up to actually a real thing and having other people around. One of the one of the things that probably made it hard for me was I was chatting to two guys for most of the way around. Mm. And like when you're chatting to guys like you're not nasal breathing because when you're talking, you're breathing out. So but it was nice to be with other people. And like, definitely, like, if you were to go out and do that on your own, run that exact route that I did, uh, not as part of an event and just on your own, man, that would be miserable. Um so I I do like the whole sign up for an event and be part of an event and be part of, you know, get connected with people that are doing it and you feel like you're doing it together, which is really nice and it is definitely helpful. Um, so I'm see whether I, I need to find something that is that ticks that ticks that box. But I sort of like the idea of um, also maybe just going and and doing something. There's one um, there's a where my sister lives in Anglesey. So Anglesey is like a little island. It just looks like it looks like it's the main land of, of Wales. It's a tiny little, and, and there's the I think mm. the coastal route of that's like a hundred miles or something like that, and it's like to see see do that over a series yeah. of like a week. <laughs> I don't know, but I guess it would be so cracky to do it in four days. You'd be doing twenty five miles a day. That'd be endurance running bug. Would you say? But that's where your mind is going in terms um, of like distance type events. I think 
I would prefer, you know, yeah. rather than like, right, can I do a marathon faster? I'm not in, yeah, I'm not, I'm not like, yeah, there, there isn't really anything in me. I've not really thought about it. So you're making me think on, uh, there isn't anything in me that really is, I'm not yeah, excited yeah. to try and do the same yeah, thing, but just faster. It'd be a bit different challenge yeah. just to try and do uh, and in I, a different I, way rather than doing the same thing, but to try and do it better, which is still a challenge. Yeah. That was the best thing someone, best advice actually someone gave to me. It was like, the, go um, go slower than you think yeah. you need to, and then even then slow it down. And they said, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's going to be a PB, whatever you do, because it's your first marathon. I was like, that's brilliant. Just, so if you just do something really for the first time every time, it's always up, a PB. Um, this was with um, so coming to land, Jacko, yeah. um, for today. Yeah. But just, I've been reflecting recently cool. um, around just the the fitness industry and the conversation at the moment um, in the fitness, health, activity, well, like training, that sort of thing. It's all hell bent on like, intensity and faster and harder and it's like if you're not pushing the dial in mm. that in that realm like what are you doing and i just think that that conversation in fitness is is uh yeah, there's nothing wrong with it it's just that that's where a lot of people's attention is going and i, and I just think there always needs to be a counterbalance to that of of something which is not about that because that yeah. is not the route like beating yourself up trying to go harder faster heavier is not the route to great longevity um in your training whether that's a short-term injury or long-term yeah, performance yeah, yeah, yeah. what you've done yeah, like if exactly you go and look at the research around health benefits the way that you've done your training in your marathon would be far better for your health than trying to run a marathon pb at three hours like yeah because there's a difference between health and performance yeah. from that angle so um well keep us for keep us posted man. Yeah, i think yeah, it's uh, yeah, be interesting exactly. for people to continue to watch the journey if the journey continues if it doesn't then we'll watch you do some of the bendy stuff um <laughs> I've still got lines on my face. <laughs> That's still like, yeah, maybe Get on the Balkan soon. Bendy program. Too, I think, Coming soon. Um, so, that was a great insights. Well done for, for completing the marathon and doing it in a way that um, has just further exploration of your current areas of interest, which I think is really good to see. Um, anyone who's got any questions for Jacko, you know where he is. Um, prolific um, on the socials and excellent at emails, so you can get to him on either. Um <laughs> Just yeah, plenty of spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes um, in both of those written formats. Other than that, Jacko, but... I haven't got anything else or anything to say to you. Well done. But yeah, no. Th yeah, I just want to say thank. Like, I had a lot of um, yeah, a lot of nice messages, a lot of support from people on on social media and on emails as well. So massive thank you uh, for those people that gave me advice, for gave or giving uh, encouragement. Um, and uh, yeah, there was even a couple of people like did their own little versions of a, of a nasal run on on the day um, themselves. Just wherever they were, were at home. So that was, yeah, that was nice. And um, if people are interested in that type of stuff, um, I share most of that on like just my personal Jacko human flag on Instagram. And I wrote a little, I wrote a blog on, um, on the Rooted Life website. That's got like four, goes into a bit of detail, the four lessons I felt like I learned from that nasal marathon. So uh, that's on rootedlife.co.uk. There you I'll go. Put a link so in the show notes I'm, gonna, blog. I'm dodging the sun for YouTube viewers. You can see me, but I'm going to get out because it's in my eyes. Um, until yeah. next week. I've got absolutely no idea what we'll talk about next week. Um, you can continue to keep exploring. Go on then, you do it. I was going to say keep. Off. Oh, I was going to say keep exploring your physical potential through movement, strength, and play, <laughs> and nasal breathing. <laughs>